This is The Creative Show, episode number nine. We're broadcasting live from the darkest corners of the marketing internet, where no tactic is off limits and the conversation almost always ends with Star Wars or the Marvel Cinematic Universe. As I mentioned, this is episode number nine, and I think we may have used this joke before, but F8 is my favorite movie in the Fast and Furious... Did I say that? I did. Fast and Furious trilogy, and they are now making episode number nine. Boy, I, I got to tell you, sometimes these days, my name is Buddy Scalera, and I am a content strategist focused on visual storytelling. I'm also a content engineer building intelligent content solutions and, of course, a professional comic book writer. I am joined by the legendary Content Marketing Institute's own creative director, their lead designer, and, of course, the last Jedi stationed in Cleveland, Mr. Joe J.K. Kalinowski. Good afternoon, Mr. Scalera. How are we doing today? Well, I'm not 100 percent sure. I'm, I'm, as you can see, I'm already discombobulated, and the show just started. <laughs> Usually, I don't get this uh, out of sorts until about the 25 minute mark. But hey, listen, it's still episode number nine. Tell me, what is your favorite nine, Joe? Buddy, you know, right at the top, you were talking about how we always end with Star Wars or Marvel. Let's just start with Star Wars. I mean, number nine, nine Star Wars films. Come on. In the original set of Star Wars films, number nine, to number one through number nine, let's do them all, love them all, and there we go. You know, there you go. I, you know, they might be a little bit better than the Fast and Furious movies, call me crazy, but you're a car guy, I'm a blaster guy, <laughs> so... It sounds great. Listen, to the listening audience, for the two people out there, fasten your seatbelts. We're about to take off the show. This episode is titled The Iron Maiden of Marketing. Amanda, cue the music. So, Joe, um, you know, we're calling this episode the Iron Maiden of Marketing. Uh, oh, I, I love it. Wore, yeah, I wore my Iron Maiden shirt from the uh, from the last tour. Actually, Ghost opened up one of your favorite oh. bands. Uh, they were they were performing uh, not a lot of their new, a lot, a lot of their old hits, a lot of new music, but they just yeah. came out with a new album. And I think the thing that's notable is that this rock band, uh, is one that has been largely ignored by the mainstream media, uh, radio playing DJs, and of course, I'm sad to say, your hometown, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, who is that band, Joe? That, sir, would be the one, the only Iron Maiden. <laughs> Joe, and you know what? You and I both enjoy Iron Maiden uh, music. We both are listening to the new album, which is very good. Yeah. Um, Funny thing about Iron Maiden, um, despite not getting radio airplay, not being in the Rock Hall of Fame, and getting really no love from the mainstream media because they just don't have that cool factor, they continue to sell records. There was some news today, Joe, how Iron Maiden's new album, and I don't even know how to pronounce it, Senjutsu, I think? Senjutsu, Senjutsu I think. Yeah. Senjutsu, okay. Um, they're charting. Joe, can you just talk a little bit about the achievement that Iron Maiden is having this week? It's amazing. They're blowing. They're they're right behind. Was it Kanye? Um, but it, it's so unbelievably interesting how they're doing it. Obviously, they have, uh, you know, at Content Marketing Institute, buddy. You and I always talk about this as creating a community, creating an audience. Mm -hmm. Boy, have these boys done this for the past forty, what forty, forty five years? They're unbelievable loyal audience. And so, what do they do? They make exclusive albums that are only available at Target and Walmart. Yeah. They make vinyl, they make CDs. Can you believe they're actually still producing compact discs? I did I honestly, Joe, I, I, I knew that there was were still being made, but I didn't know the charts still recorded that. So I, I you know, I'm not fully into it. A, a quick note, their first album was 1980. And uh, according to the discography, uh, Iron Maiden has had 17, this is the 17th studio album, 13 live albums, if you can believe, wow. uh, seven compilations, uh, 20 video albums, uh, 40 music videos, four EPs, 46 singles, and five box sets. What this... <laughs> What this achievement, though, on their 17th studio album is amazing. This is they've charted the highest ever with their album. And I think there's two things that, I, that, that are worth keeping in mind um, that they don't need 
uh, the mainstream media. They have a relationship with their audience. In fact, uh, during one of the music awards, Lady Gaga, uh, who I adore, I think she's great, sure. um, had once said uh, during an interview, they said, do you want to be the next Madonna, intimating that, you know, a, a hit machine? And uh, Lady Gaga wisely said, no, I want to be the next Iron Maiden. Oh. And... The reason being is because Iron Maiden, uh, and I'm not saying that Madonna doesn't have a relationship with their audience, certainly, um, but Iron Maiden year after year has a relationship with their audiences. Um, I have gone to uh, a number of their shows over the years, and it doesn't matter if they have an album coming out. If they're going to a show, I am going to buy a ticket if I can. I took my daughters to go see Iron Maiden, and they put on a wonderful show. And the thing about it is that they are truly building a relationship with the Iron Maiden community, with their fan club, and they don't depend on external factors. I think uh, Joe talks about this and Robert talk about this, don't build your property on rented land. They own their land, they own their mailing list, they own their relationship, and this is what has allowed them to continually come out with albums and not worry about what the pop culture preferences are. Right. And, and again, um, moving the needle, in Billboard uh, is no uh, small feat. In fact, they talked about saying, look, we wanted to do something that was notable. So we moved the needle at Target and Walmart. I think that's an amazing strategic approach and one that has gotten the mainstream press from the mainstream press that might have no, never otherwise covered the new album. What, what about your thoughts, Joe? What do you think? Well, you're, you're exactly right, buddy. It's incredible how they, how they attacked uh, the or you know they strategized to on the release of this new album. They're charting, which is unbelievable, with physical sales over digital sales. But what I always found unique about Iron Maiden was the fact that you know they have their own sound. If you're an Iron Maiden fan, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Even if you're not a fan, you know what we're talking about. But what's very interesting is they all have an eclectic story in and of themselves. The story of Iron Maiden is pretty interesting, even down to the fact. That they own, you know, you were talking about the rented land thing that Polizzi and, and Robert always talk about. Um, they own their own plane. It's called Flight 666. And Bruce right. Dickinson, the lead singer, is That's the right. pilot. <laughs> That's crazy, isn't it? He flies, <laughs> every, he flies them everywhere. And what's so incredibly unique too, buddy, is the fact that, you know, you're very fortunate. Um, you live in a market where you get to see Iron Maiden because That's they right. don't really hit some of these secondary markets. You know, they tour a lot of Europe. But they, when they come to the States, it's an event, you know, they, they play larger cities, larger scale venues because they know they can get a bigger draw and people will travel to see them. I mean, it's just, it's, it's amazing what they've created over 40 years. I, you know, I, you, you know, I think of Kiss, you know, the rock band Kiss that you and I have a, a, a love for, and we talk about them quite often, but what's, you know, they've had the Kiss Army and all this stuff. But what Iron Maiden does that's very smart from a marketing sense compared to KISS, because KISS slaps their logo, will sell their name, put their name on any, everything. They've had a farewell tour for the past 40 years. <laughs> that's right. Uh, you know, Iron Maiden, <laughs> Iron Maiden has, has a very smart marketing tactics where they do not do that. Um, they only slap their label on stuff that, specifically is of interest to each one of the members yeah um and they do small tours they own their their mailing list mm -hmm. you know what i mean they can specifically talk directly to their 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 fans and their subscribers i mean e as we all know in the marketing world right now a subscriber to an email list is gold it's it's the new crypto baby you know if you have somebody that wants to get your newsletter and open it up you're i mean you're ahead in the race am i right so I, I agree and i think the um the other angle that they chose was a winning angle in which they didn't look for traditional mainstream media reviews or even depend on magazines of record like Rolling Stone uh, to review their album favorably. They knew their audience would go and get that. But what they did was they created an event. And their event was, we are going to focus on Walmart and Target. And they said, let's get as many people through those doors. And this is actually, this is from a couple different articles you and I have cobbled together. We'll include them in the show notes. What's interesting about these articles is they talk about a marketing vision that they had, which was get people through the door, 
create a little bit of excitement at two of the major U.S. retailers or global retailers, rather, I should say, that would allow them to have an impact. And there's not a lot of places where albums are sold anyway. Um, but they weren't just going for the streaming audience, which would be limited to people who were already familiar with Iron Maiden. They went to their audience and said, go buy this album. And of course, it charted, which was newsworthy. Sure. So they did something that was newsworthy. They've reaped the benefits. And of course, for those of us who are already streaming the album, we just thought, well, this is great. And other people are listening to it. So I think the key thing is, if you already have a brand and you have an audience, it helps to rev them up with an event and give them something to rally behind. For sure. Um, you know, what's so interesting too, buddy, is you and I had talked about this earlier this week when we were, you know, kind of talking about this Iron Maiden, uh, this interesting article that and and their new album. Um, you and I and are might be on the tail end of the last bastion of the guys that could go to a traditional record store. Right. You know, before that record stores became boutique record stores, when you actually went to a record store to get your music. That's right. Um, you know, I was I, I popped into Walmart or Target, I'm sorry, uh, a couple days ago, and I was just going through their vinyl section there looking for this new album. And it is unbelievable the price points of vinyl now. Yeah. You know, we used to be able to go to a record store and get an album for eight bucks. You are paying thirty five dollars for an album now. On That's vinyl. right. They were seven ninety nine for the longest time, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, seriously. And if you were lucky, you got the little punch out. Remember that they, they would punch the corner because they weren't selling enough, so you'd get it for like four bucks. But uh, what? I, but you know, from a visual standpoint, I have to mention that Iron Maiden just dominated the heavy metal scene in the eighties, nineties, even till today, with the artwork and yeah. all of the promotion of their albums. I mean. They have one of the most unique logos, as you can see on your shirt. Um, and then Eddie, their their mascot, that kind of gristled, mummified looking dude. Um, that you know, it, it's he's so unmistakable and so unique to their visual brand that you know what you're getting. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. how many do you remember the days of the back patch on the back of jean jackets? I had the trooper. Uh, the Iron Maiden Trooper back patch on the back of my jean jacket for years. Might yeah, they, have it somewhere. their visuals are, are incredibly consistent and yet continue to vary. So it rewards the people who are familiar with the, the iconic imagery of Eddie, right, Joe? Yeah. And then also expands and, and, and creates a, a excitement, but also a visual lockup. Since, uh, you know, for this show, Joe, we literally spent minutes in pre-production prepping for the show. We don't have anything to display, but uh, people should feel free to Google at the end of the show if they are interested in uh, Eddie from Iron Maiden. Um, and we don't do post-production because uh, yeah. we're just too lazy. So whatever we go with, we go with. Uh, so go and do your own research. Um, here's the logo if you're not familiar with it. But Joe, speaking of albums, yeah. speaking of albums, uh, there was a time when we did all have lots of albums and and we tried to be cool right like iron maiden it was a cool band yeah um but you know you didn't see a lot of people walking around with a barry manilow patch on the back of their jean jacket um i own some super uncool albums and uh before the show you said you also own some super uncool albums and you actually have one to let me tell you mine Mine okay. first, because you actually have a visual. So I had two super uncool albums that I would never admit to my heavy metal friends uh, that I owned, but I absolutely love them, and I still have them on my computer. I bought them on CD. That's how much I love them. Uh, the first one was the uh, the soundtrack to the movie Grease, which uh, I have to tell you, it still holds up today. I love it. I'll still be like, yeah, I'm rocking out to Grease. My daughters are like, what is that? And I'm like, Let's go back to Rydell High, <laughs> and I will tell you all about it. And they actually dig it. Uh, and the other is uh, uh, Donna Summers Live. Oh, and I know no, there's no. a resurgence in that 80s uh, disco music, but I listen to that, and I'll put it on, and I'm like, I am, I'm playing MacArthur Park. I don't care what anybody <laughs> says. What an album. But I would hide them. I would hide them. I would, like, I have my metal eyes and my Iron Maiden and my Metallica. Yeah. DC, but yeah. I would always hide the... You said you, know you have so a couple, but you still have yours. I do. But you know what's so funny? I just think of you riding around your neighborhood, blasting MacArthur Park in your convertible. I bet you you do it now. With now 12, I do. Right? I, didn't, I didn't then. Now <laughs> I 
Actually, Joe, I was I was pulling up to uh, to the store. I was pulling up to go to Target, and I came up to this light, and there was these two kids, and they were rocking out, and they're like, doo, 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 doo. and I'm like, yeah, like this, and I'm like, yeah, rock on, and they they turned off to own the night, and I turned in to Target to buy a vacuum bag. So I feel like <laughs> life has gone so so off the tracks for me, and I oh god. I am no longer cool, but tell me, tell me what okay. was your embarrassing album? And, and I think it's, people should okay. pay attention to these because there's a prize at the end. Go, Joe. That's right. So just like you, buddy, this one was always hidden in the back of the ra the back of the stack. And I always blame my parents if my buddies come across it because all my Iron Maiden, all my Kiss, so everything was right in the front. The 1976 self-titled Kenny Roger. Yeah. Hey That's Joe, right. I mean Kenny. Even then, first album. Look at that beard. I mean, that yeah, is man. an epic beard. So this is this is the album with you know you picked the fine time to leave me, Lucille. Um, yeah. So that was that was my this was like post uh, Kenny Rogers in what was it the the fifth edition or the new edition where he was trying to be like a a rock star and he realized it wasn't working, so he switched over to country, cut his hair a little bit. Look, is he all salt and pepper, and he's got the nice big like medallion on there. My God, Kenny had it going on. He and and today, today, Joe, we can appreciate people like how how cool Kenny Rogers. We didn't then, right? But it's like you know, it's like you you realize later in life, guys. Like I don't know, I was just watching it. Just showed up, I think, on the Roku channel. James Garner on the Rockford Files. I re I started rewatching. I'm like, is that the coolest guy in the world? Oh, I mean, yeah. he, and he what he did what didn't he drop like a sixty eight cougar? Uh, no, he drew he drew he, he I think he drove a, a Firebird is Firebird, what he drove. That was it. He drove a Firebird, and but like you look at Kenny Rogers and you go look at that dude look, that is an epic beard. Yeah, look at and, this. I mean, come on. But you hid that, right? You told me you hid that. Oh yeah, I hid this. There was no way my gig. This was hidden be, between Kiss Alive and Kiss Alive Two. You know. Come on, because in the, you know, in, the it, in the case, in the yeah, you just kind of hide it back there, and then all of a sudden, you know, like I said, my buddy pull it out and go, "What the hell is this?" And it's like, "Oh, my dad must have been been going through my records." So, <laughs> but when he went in there, you were spinning Kenny Rogers records. Oh yeah, and yeah, now yeah. I got to tell you that that album I bet holds up today. Oh, it does. I still listen to it. I I have it upstairs from on my vinyl. Yeah, I brought it down specifically for this episode. So I'm going to ask anybody who's um, watching this uh, to put the least cool album or that what they thought was the least cool album when they were young, uh, but now holds up. Like yeah. just like I said, Donna Summers and 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 Greece, they hold up. I don't care what anybody says. I think they're great albums. Greece um, is the word, baby. <laughs> Greece is the word. And and Joe, uh, tell them about the little sweepstakes idea and show them the little prize potentially that they could win if they see you at Content Marketing World. Okay, so we've been chatting about it. The first person to tweet Buddy and I at J.K. Kalinowski at Buddy Scalera, the first person to tweet us what my lamest album was and what Buddy's two lamest album was were, we'll get one of these specially, freshly printed Creative Show t-shirts. And you have to get the albums right. You have to be the first person. And you know what? I will throw in an extra special little prize from the cave with it too. So now, you'll get a little this is this is for live people as well. So the uh, yeah. I think so. This is the there's a social prize and then also a live prize. Like so, if somebody sees you, the first person that sees you at Content Marketing World happens to be watching this video. Will they be able to win as well? Sure. Yeah. If somebody comes up to me and says, "Hey, you're you're," <laughs> I love that Kenny Rogers album. <laughs> I might be able to find them something. I think you would. I think you walk around with a pocket full of uh, stuff. But listen, I think the key thing is as marketing professionals, uh, we should be creative with our brand, but be consistent. Iron Maiden showed us how to be creative, consistent. Iron Maiden also showed the power of uh, having a strong relationship. It's not sometimes we use the wrong words as marketers. We own our audience. Nobody owns the audience. What we have is a relationship that's mutually beneficial. And there is a high trust that I have in Iron Maiden that when they have an, an album come out, it'll sound like what I want an Iron Maiden album to sound like. And I will commit to that. And I will spend time with that album. And in the time 
that I will go, I will expect that if I buy that album or that CD, it will come with bonus material that it'll make it worth buying the physical disc or right. CD. So I think that those are key elements uh, to consider. Joe, any additional takeaways that marketers or content marketers should remember about uh, what we've learned today with Iron Maiden? Well, I think, you know, we were, we were talking about it earlier, you know, the, the whole rented land thing is, is huge, but, you know, value your audience, nurture your audience. I mean, it's, it's the tent that one of the main tenets of, of marketing and content marketing, build your audience, nurture them, give them what they need and they will stick with you. There's 42 years of Iron Maiden fans from, from, you know, guys like us to our kids and probably our kids' kids are, will listen, will pull out those old Iron Maiden vintage albums by the time, you know, they can listen to them. Um, so it's all about nurturing that, that audience and giving them what they're asking for. Yeah, one of my um, – so, again, I'm wearing an Iron Maiden T-shirt. There's lots yeah. of swag in my office. You see my, my Kiss action figures there. One of uh, the – tenants that we have in comic books is give people plenty of choices at plenty of price points right. give them options to be part of something like if somebody were to buy an iron maiden shirt there's an expensive one and then there's an affordable one there's an exclusive action figure and then there's the regular affordable one and then if we think about content you know there might be content that is publicly available but might also only be available uh, for the fan club or the official registrants to the email newsletter Better. These are things that make the relationship special. And I think that as content marketers, we have to be creative in our creativity as well. Give them different ways to contribute. Give them ways to share their voice. Because now uh, with web, are we 2.0, 3.0, whatever it is, people want to be part of the conversation. So I think Iron Maiden's done a great job of doing that as well, Joe. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I couldn't... Uh... And they, they make wonderful music. <laughs> they make great music. I've, and they've always stayed true to their sound. And yeah. Iron Maiden record sounds like an Iron Maiden record, just the way ACDC sounds like an ACDC record. And someone told me a great piece of advice regarding ACDC. ACDC has been around since, I think, 1977 or 78-ish, right? And they said that they are officially the last band in the world allowed to write a rock and roll song singing about how they're going to rock you with a rock and roll song so that's it that's, <laughs> oh, that's they, they that's, it. that's it after they're gone no one else is allowed to write a rock and roll song about how, how they're about to rock you with a rock and roll song oh my god um, that's so funny you know now that you say that you look back at their catalog you're exactly right every song they're talking about rocking you with their rock like, we're about to we're about to rock you and you're like <laughs> So, you know, yeah, you definitely, uh, you know, that was very, that was a mainstay of late 80s, early 90s music before uh, we all discovered Nirvana and then uh, were flannel. It was all about we're rocking you or we're about to rock you. So um, even even the the name of the album was for those about to rock. We were like, oh, that's us. We're about to rock. We're, we're going to do it. <laughs> Yeah. They told us what we're going to rock. We're going to, in about 10 minutes, we're about to rock. So anyway, um, I hope other people take a listen to the Iron Maiden album, and I hope it does help people discover uh, the other albums in their catalog. Um, but Joe, uh, speaking of merchandising, yeah. uh, we have engineered a portion of the show specifically so that you can have a tax write-off for all the junk. I mean, all the uh, work-relevant stuff that you bring home in boxes or is shipped to your house, and we call this section of the show, Joe, What's in the Box? All right. Well, this week, um, it's so funny, buddy, that we were talking Iron Maiden this week. You know, you and I had been talking a couple days. Uh, one of my my dear friends, uh, who is a fan of craft breweries, brought me uh, the official Iron Maiden beer called Hellcat. Yeah, hold that up good. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Can now turn see it, turn it. I haven't actually seen this. Keep going. Wow. Isn't that great? Yeah, and that's it. A, really it, follows like it's called true. I, I believe that oh, yeah. I believe it might be Trooper Beer, the Hellcat version. This is their Indian IP or the IPA, um, Indian Pale Ale, India Pale Ale. Uh, and, and let me just it's made by uh Brew Dog out of Columbus, Ohio. But you know, we were talking about Iron Maiden and how they you know, from a visual standpoint, like, look, you can kind of see, like, for those who know Eddie, you can see the, the lion on the front has the Eddie look and the Iron <laughs> yeah. Maiden, yeah, the Iron Maiden font. 
But, you know, we were talking about like how the band members get behind the products that, that are released, you know, like they really, uh, you know, they, they really enjoy certain guitars or whatever. Let me read you what the can says real quick. It says Iron Maiden and Brewdog unite to launch Hellcat, a feisty IPA that uh, blah, blah, blah. But let me get to this. Um, brewed in the USA, Hellcat joins the global trooper family of beers crafted by Maiden vocalist and beer aficionado Bruce Dickinson. So Bruce Dickinson, the lead singer of Iron Maiden, helped actually come up with the recipe for this. I, you know, and that's that's actually kind of cool because I'm pretty sure that Gene Simmons did not lie in a Kiss casket to validate if that casket was really Kiss material. But we do know that Bruce Dickinson likes that. That's not their first beer either, Joe. I don't think. No, right? no others... I think they they have a. It's called the Trooper brand, and I think that they they actually started with the Trooper, and then they have different like you know, different kinds of like loggers and IPAs and all that kind of stuff. But I are, believe are you able to try it? Are you, are you going to, you're going to, I have one. This is the, this is the one for the shelf. My buddy knew that I was going to want to shelf one and drink one. So the, the other one's in the fridge. So it was going to crack it at the end of the show. So oh, this is, a, this is a good friend. I hope you treat this, uh, this friend very well. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, he might, uh, he might get one of these. That is that is a good friend. I uh, what's what's your friend's name? Pete. Pete. Thank you, Pete, for ensuring that we can continue to look at what's in Joe's box. And every week or month, whenever we do this show, you'll get to look in uh, Joe's secret world. Uh, it is a, a pretty amazing place. He has an epic man cave. And Joe. For this show, which I believe, what is what are we supposed to call this, Amanda? You just give it the, the voice of Amanda. This is called a live what? A live cast? A live stream? What are we doing? There what you are go. We, this All one, right. There we she goes. <laughs> there she goes. She's uh she actually she's on for the whole show, Joe. You don't see her it's like the snuffleupagus. She can only be seen by children and the pure of heart. So That's true. For a moment there, I was worthy of uh, picking up Mjolnir, and that's why we got Amanda. But anyway, where can they find this live stream, Joe? Where where is uh, where is it generally if people want to see it? Uh, you can pop over for a whole list of Content Marketing Institute shows. Go over to contentmarketinginstitute.com and click on shows, and the list will pop down. You'll find us there amongst all of our other live streams. Uh, click it, or you could just uh, uh, it'll take you right to the YouTube page. Or you can just go straight to YouTube, look up Content Marketing Institute, and you'll find our smiling faces on there as well. And Joe, where can they find you if they want to follow you either on social networks or any other place? They can pretty much find me everywhere at J.K. Kalinowski and wandering the halls of the Content Marketing Institute, and especially wandering the halls and the booth at Content Marketing World. Do you guys really have halls at Content Marketing Institute, or you just go to Polizzi's house and, and wander around his garage? I just wander around my backyard and call it the Content Marketing <laughs> Institute. <laughs> um, also broadcasting from our backyard, I should uh, give a shout out to Amanda Subler, who's been doing such a wonderful job engineering yeah. our show. Thank you so much for joining us, Amanda. Uh, you bring a layer uh, to the show that, that we really appreciate. So thank you so much. Uh, for all that you do for us. And um, you can find me, Buddy Scalera, at uh, comicbookschool.com or at buddyscalera.com. And also, all of my social handles are either buddyscalera.com or comicbookschool.com. Or I should say, I'm sorry, the CMI award winning comicbookschool.com. Yeah, because there there's, is. yeah, I'll be milking that for years <laughs> on end. You and to, my friend, you deserve, yeah. you do wonderful work with you and all of your wonderful community at comic book school. You should be very proud of your award. It's well-deserved. I don't share credit, Joe. It's me, all me, <laughs> totally me. It's nothing to do with anybody else. I don't owe anybody else. No, seriously, it, it, is, it is definitely. Anytime you win an award, it is definitely there's a there's a cast of thousands, uh, just as it takes to run this show, a cast of thousands. Anyway, uh, we hope people enjoyed the creative show and stick with us. Uh, click uh, like, 
leave a comment and subscribe and actually get alerted because I think the show uh, will eventually get good uh, if we keep doing it. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, we hopefully will see you at Content Marketing World in Cleveland. If not, we will see you online. And please, everybody, stay creative. Catch the Creative Show live stream the last Friday of every month.